Hi guys, we put our fridge out on the covered porch and it was just too cold out so we brought it back inside and put it in the basement which is a less ideal location just because it's like less accessible for me but it'll be fine. So hopefully those lavender seeds will thaw out soon and then they can start their process. They can germinate. It says 30 to 40 days on the seed packet before it germinates. We've got a ways out before we're actually going to see full lavender plants but the worth is wait. <laughs> wait is worth it. <laughs> the worth is waited. The wait is worth it. The worth is waited. The worth is waited. Okay. It's been a really long day. The wait, the wait is worth it. So the other thing I wanted to show you guys was just my planning process in this vlog. So I've got, I got the, the floret calendar for Christmas. And so I'm using it to mark my, my dates and like mark my last frost date. And then I count back, you know, two weeks, four weeks, three weeks, you know, two weeks. I count back two weeks, four weeks. Two weeks. Oh my gosh. I can count. I count back two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, you know, all the way up to eight weeks and some 12 weeks. I think it's brown eyed season requires 12 weeks. So I'm doing all that. So I'll just use a calendar. It's a lot easier to have a physical calendar than it is to have it in my Google calendar because my Google calendar, there's just like a lot and you have to like click on the week to actually be able to see everything. Whereas in my physical calendar, I can just open it and see it all at once and I can flip really fast. So I, I'm still a fan of physical paper. I know the rest of the world has moved on. And I mean, I use the Google calendar and all that stuff too. But so I'm going to show you my process today. So here I have marked last spring frost. And you can see two weeks. And then you can see I actually have written out like when I'm going to start seeds. So you've got sunflowers, borage, zinnias, zinnia, straw flower. Salvia agasash scabiosa, straw flower stasis. Here we've got gomfrina and co cosmos. Here's a lot. So this is week eight, eight weeks before the last frost, spring frost. And so there's a lot of things at week eight. So there's aster, hyssop, there's bee balm, verbena, more hyssop, creeping thyme, globe thistle, and portaluca, which is moss rose. Rudbeckia, black eyed Susan, and echinacea. And then here in February, I've got yarrow, brown eyed Susan. This is one month from eight weeks, so this would be one month in the fridge, um, one month from 10 weeks. A lavender in the fridge here. And then here we did brown eyed Susan, black eyed Susan, and Rudbeckia gold blitz. So that's kind of looking at, you know, we're here, so we're the 17th today, and I'm looking at winter sowing this last. Two weeks and then the first two weeks of February and then all most of my indoor sewing will happen end of March and then in April I'll do all that indoor sewing but I'm also going to do more winter sewing in April like things like tomatoes and cosmos and zinnia they actually do really well winter sewed if you do them later and they have a shorter season of cold that becomes warm faster you can actually winter sew a lot of annuals that way so I'll be doing that now I'm going to show you my spreadsheet Okay guys, so I'm going to show you my spreadsheet that I have to keep track of all my seeds and stuff. So here we've got seeds starting for winter spring 2024. We've got garden A here. This is one of the backyards that we're going to be working on this season. We've got my echinacea, you've got creeping thyme, rutabecchia, gold th globe thistle, all the lavender that we started in the fridge. Um, hyssop, agastache, portaluca, bee balm, salvia, yarrow, and verbena. This is garden A, so this is one of the backyards we're working on. Then we have our own Taylor and Cassidy's garden. This is a small cut flower garden. This is 100 square feet. Dollies aren't, aren't on here because they're not seeds, they're tubers. This is exactly how many flowers I can pack into 100 square feet. That's all of that. Garden B is another backyard they're working on this season. This is also a perennial garden started from seed. We, we also bought bushes for this garden. So we bought things from bluestone perennial that are currently in our garden in pot, put them in our in our raised bed to overwinter. So here we have for garden B, things like blazing star, rutabecchia, pearly everlasting, echinacea, cupid start, creeping thyme, two types. We'll use that on that retaining wall that we built this last season. Fever few, golden alexander, joe pieweed, globe thistle, hyssop, agasash, more hyssop, agasash, bee balm, lavender, salvia, yarrow. I'm going to start dahlia seeds and do um, dahlia seedlings. This client really loves aster, so this is an annual, so it's not quite in line with the perennial themes, but they really wanted them, so we'll do those as well. So I have almost all of the seeds. I'm just waiting for one more shipment from Select Seeds and then we'll be off to the races. Just wanted to show you the information I take down for this. So I've got, you know, for Echinacea, Wild Coneflower, I've got two packs, 35 seeds, 35 seeds, 
times two. So that's how many seeds I have. Um, it's from Select Seeds. It needs three to four weeks in the fridge, eight to ten weeks starting indoors. I will winter sow it in January, February. That's pretty much the same for everything except for, you know, over here. With Porta Luca, I'm not going to sow it in the fridge. It needs eight weeks. And if I do winter sow it, it'd be like in April because it's more of an annual. Along with the other example of that would be the dahlias and the asters. Those would also be winter sowed in April and no cold stratification in the fridge. I'm still working out some of them if I will cold stratify in the fridge at all if they need it. A lot of these are wildflowers, so they probably benefit, but I'm wondering if I should just winter sow them and skip the, the fridge step. So that's kind of where I'm at. And then I have a second spreadsheet here with the actual things I've sowed. So I need to put in a spreadsheet for the fridge, which I'll do right now. But first I'll show you my winter sewing spreadsheet. So it just shows in bin number one on January 7th, I sewed these guys. I say how many I started, which I know exactly because I did it with a toothpick. And then I have a space for how many germinated, which I don't know yet. And then also how many survived to full maturity. So that's really important to me. Just because a seed germinates and comes up as a seedling doesn't mean that it's actually going to survive. And a lot of them won't make it. I kind of want to know what the survival rate is, which will tell me how healthy my potting soil is and how healthy my my method of doing soil blocks is that will give me a lot of information i'm gonna make my fridge spreadsheet here back to these here so i did these guys what did i do over here I did the date. So the date was the 14th. It's all lavenders, the different ones. Let's see here. Oh yeah. So this tells me in this category how many plants I need total and then how many seeds I actually have. So that's two really helpful numbers. So wow, it's like look at that. I need 20 rutabacca plants and I have 892 seeds. So I can do a bit of experimenting with this seed packet. Whereas with this one, Echinacea Paradiso mix. I bought four packs. I need 35 plants. Each pack has 15 seeds in it. I don't have a whole lot of room for experimenting with this particular type. Let's see, what else? What other information do I need for this? For methods. So let's put method here. Or actually, hold on. Add another method. So I did with this one, I've, I remember I did all three. And then also with Elegance Pink, I did all three, I believe. I can check that later. But with Snow and Purple, I only did one method. And I can't quite remember what exact methods are, so I'll need to go check. I know it's strange, so I'm just going to add um, two rows of below it so I can do. Um, so I did potting soil, I did paper towel, and I did the, the wool. Then I'm going to have a germinated category. And I'll just record on there like how many germinated. So I can actually go in and look and be like, okay, the potting soil method did not work at all. The wool method worked great. Almost all 10 germinated. Actually, I'm going to put one column here. All of these were 10, I believe. So I've got fridge sewing. So I've got my, my type, which is lavender. Uh, my variety, which is the Munstead strain. My method, I did all three methods, which is the potting soil, paper towel, and the wool. How many started? 10, and then I'll be able to record when they do germinate, how many germinated for what method. I can keep track, just like I can do with my winter sewing. And I'll also do a spreadsheet for my indoor sewing, which won't I won't get to for a couple months here, but I might as well just put it in there for later. Um, and this just allows me to track all my methods so I can figure out in the future, it just would cut down on time in the future because then I can just go straight to the method that works because I have the data recorded and I don't have to remember off the top of my head. So the trick is just keeping the data entry up to speed. So I just have to da do the data entry as things happen or else it just gets too overwhelming and I, I don't keep up. And then I just have to do all the methods again the next year because I don't actually know which one works. Let's see, so I did three more of this, or two more of this. I wonder what I did. For, I need to go check. I'm just going to add a notes category because they, I think, I want to check, but I think they all froze at the beginning. All right, so I'll just continue keeping up, keeping track. So I've got a lot of seeds starting to do in the future. So I don't know about you, but for me, I'm starting so many seeds this season. I feel really overwhelmed. I don't know how to divvy it up. My only idea for what I'll do is every day I'll just start like 100 seeds or something like that. With the mini soil box, I started 60 seeds like really quickly. It didn't take that long at all. I just feel like, oh my gosh, there's so many seeds. I'll probably just need to start anywhere from 60, 100 seeds any evening that I can, which is a lot. <laughs> ah.